I think people are eager to find what is truth, something that's meaningful, something that's authentic, something almost that's tangible that they can touch. They want answers, right? And YouTube is all about answers. And you can find whatever answers, even answers to lies, you can find on YouTube. You ask how to and then fill in the blank and there's going to be a YouTube for that. So that's why I thought, okay, how to talk to aliens. Some people, as crazy as it might seem, some people are like, are like honestly in a pursuit of that. And if you don't believe me, just think what our culture has done in the, last, in the past 120 something years. Culture, the film industry. Over 652 major Movies featuring extraterrestrials. Okay, are you guys familiar with any of those? I'm sure you are. How about Star Trek? Anyone? <laughs> Space Odyssey? The first one, this is, this is so cool. The first one was A Trip to the Moon in 1902. That's the first movie that features aliens. How many of you were alive back then? Not many of you, right? Me neither. <laughs> that was way, way back then. Space Jam. Right? Who among you? I mean, look at each other and just, just look at each other for a second and think, are you, are you really from Earth? Just look at the features, right? When, when we look at uh, Space Jam, people were saying back in the days, you know, Michael Jordan is not from this world. He's got to be an alien. How can he do those things? He's not from here. Right? MIB. Superman, he comes from another planet. Transformers, E.T., aliens, predator, aliens versus predator, and so on and so forth, right? So many movies in our culture. And if you think about it, it's like, <clears throat> why are people, why are people like so, why are we as humans always asking this question? Like, is there, is there life in other planets, right? I think it's just human nature to be curious and to think when we look at the stars, right, we just released, um, well, not we, but we, NASA, <laughs> in the United States. <clears throat> uh, how many of you have seen, like, Webb, what's it called? Webb, I wrote it here, because James Webb Telescope. How many of you ha guys have seen James Webb Telescope images, like the latest ones? Are they mind-blowing? Do they, do they inspire you to start thinking, wow. Are we, are we really the only ones in the universe? Are we really the only creatures that roam around galaxies, right? Well, somebody thought of that before. I mean, there's, there's Star Wars and all of that, right? People who in a galaxy far, far away. But these crisp images, I think they're bringing back to humanity, like this sense of awe, this sense of like, wow, we're, we're, we're kind of minuscule when it comes to the universe, right? We're... we're we're like ants. Imagine how the ants feel. <laughs> Anyways, culture wants to know. We're looking for truth. Is there truth out there? My friend, we, the other day we were watching a movie about aliens, and our friend kept asking, hey, that's, that would be an interesting question. Is there, like, did God create life in other planets? What do you think? And then this is going to be super blasphemous of me to say, just bear with me. But then I said, well, technically, Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, which is not of this planet, right? She's like, oh, I've never, I never thought of it like that, right? And then anyways, that, that could lead to another, another story. But check this out. Let's go a little bit into, we're looking for answers. We look into culture and culture is looking for answers. We go to the internet, everybody's looking for answers, how to how to talk to aliens, how to everything. There's a scientist, this is so epic. So listen to this. There's a scientist named Blatko Vedral. He's a physicist. And here's the thing. He was an alien because one of the definitions of alien is a person that's not from the country where you're living, right? So technically I'm an alien. I'm from Mexico. And... I'm an alien in the United States. So Vlad Vedral was an alien from, I f sorry, I forgot the, the, 
the country in Europe, but he became a citizen of England, a citizen of you know, the, what's it called, British. He's a British citizen now. So he knows something about being an alien and a scientist. And check what he said on, uh, he's got a book called Decoding Reality, the Universe as Quantum Information. Okay, Decoding Reality, the Universe as Quantum Information. And he says the fabric of the universe, <clears throat> well, this is me saying what he says, okay? <laughs> The fabric of the universe doesn't dwell in time, space, and matter, but rather is made of information. So scientists, he says that scientists are still speculating, right, in the scientific world. He's like, we always come down to this thing called infinite regression. So infinite regression is an interesting concept because it means for scientists, right, scientists are trying to discover truth, and they do it by the scientific method, which is repeating a thing over and over until they, they figure out, okay, this is why this thing is happening and what's causing it to happen, right? Uh, and therefore, it can become a law that every time you do this, the law of whatever will make the, the effect happen, right? So he's saying there's this thing called infinite regression that means that even in the scientific world, when they say, okay, so yeah, the, the universe was created by a big bang, but who created, like, how did the Big Bang happen? Like, what was the force that caused the Big Bang to happen? And they stay in a loop called that, infinite regression, where you just keep going back and back and back. And then you get to the point where, like, well, something caused that, that caused something, that caused something, that caused something. And you just never end that circle. However, this is where Vlad Vedral is genius. He says, what if we've been looking at the universe with the wrong lens, basically? We've been looking at the universe with, with matter, space, time. And he proposes, what if the universe is made of information, right? Data. So that blew my mind because I thought, that is exactly right. That is the word of God. Information that travels around galaxies. And this information, look what Jesus said. We're going to go to the scripture, right? We're here to dig into scripture too. So if you want to go with me, it's John 17, 13. And it says, um, I'm coming to you now, but I say these things. This is Jesus, okay? I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. This is Jesus praying to God for his disciples and he says, Lord, I pray for them that you protect them from the evil one. I mean, John is phenomenal. Just read John. All these chapters are phenomenal. I wish I could go through all of them because it's just mind-blowing. But uh, he says right here, they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. So basically, Jesus is saying, I'm not of this world. I have intel. I have information that you guys need to know. Right? And we know all about that. We know Jesus sets us free. We know he's the Savior. We know he came to rescue us from our sins. Right? So now let's go to the definition of an alien. Relating to or denoting being supposedly from other worlds, extraterrestrial. Check what Jesus says to Pilate in John 18, 36. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. <clears throat> now he didn't say from another planet. He didn't say from another galaxy. From another place. Information. If you are a follower of Jesus, 
How many of you are? You are the alien. <laughs> you are the alien. We are the alien. That might sound super blasphemous, I know. But check this out. Um, the, uh, this movie I was watching called The Arrival, I think it's from 2016. There's, there's like these 12 pods that appear throughout the earth. And then they want to communicate to these aliens, right? Like, who are these aliens? Why are they here? Always the question in all the movies is, do you come in peace or are you here to destroy us? Right? That's what we want to know. If you're here, you're a friend or foe type of thing. So if you're here to destroy us, well, we're going to destroy you first. <laughs> but if you're here for something else, we want to know. Right? So in this movie, they bring a linguist to talk to the aliens because they're like, we've never talked to aliens. How do we even talk to aliens? Right? So they bring the linguist and she, she you know, the aliens write in circles and then she realizes, oh, this is, this is what they're trying to communicate. And she develops like a whole um, alphabet in a sense out of these scripts that the aliens do, right? Uh, so anyways, that's the movie. But what, what was so interesting about it is that, wow, if you want to communicate to the alien, you want to have a linguist. You want to have somebody that can interpret what they're trying to say, right? So check what the government has done in the United States. How many of you guys follow a little bit like conspiracy theories type of stuff and Area 51, <laughs> David over there in the back? Maybe not some of you, but again, we're on the internet, okay? Right now people are watching and the online world, there's all kinds of theories. Conspiracy theories, real theories, whatever. Um, and check this out, here in the US, so we looked at culture, we looked at scripture, we looked at, what was the other one? We looked at science, right? Now look at the government. The government here in the U.S., sorry to break it up to you guys, but let's check this out. The militaries, this is a report from NPR News on NPR.org. The military's 2021 report said no evidence of aliens have been found. Okay? So what I just said, that you guys are the aliens, well, according to the government, no. There's no evidence of aliens whatsoever. As Scott W. Bray, the deputy director of Naval Intelligence, told lawmakers that they still haven't uncovered anything non-terrestrial in origin, even though there are incidents they can't explain. Right? <laughs> wow. But check this out. This is this is this next thing just blew my mind. Again, I was I was like, how am I gonna like bring this to you guys? And I just kept blowing my mind again and again as I was like trying to come to truth. Is this dead? No, it's done. Okay, sorry. Transparency versus secrecy. This is how the government brings you the news when it comes to aliens, okay? By the way, they don't call them UFOs anymore. Now it's called UAP. Did you know that? Awesome, Rob did. Unidentified aerial phenomena. That's the correct term for UFOs nowadays. Unidentified aerial phenomena. So this is what they said. We are also mindful of our obligation to protect sensitive sources and methods, said, um, what's his name, Ronald Moultrie said in his opening remarks. Our goal is to strike that delicate balance, one that will enable us to maintain the public's trust while preserving those capabilities that are vital to the support of our service personnel. And he elaborates a little more. He says, we do not want potential adversaries to know exactly what we see or understand. Ronald Moultrie said later in the hearing, which was followed by a closed door classified session. How do you guys like that? Transparency versus secrecy, right? There's, there's, there's no aliens but if there are, we're kind of going to keep it secret because what if it 
falls into the, the hands of the enemy, right? You can't really know what we know. So they protected and they say, this is, we need to be private with this matter. Now, when, you, when it comes to broadcasting truth, who do you want to believe? Jesus or the Pentagon? <laughs> when broadcasting truth, who do you want to believe? Jesus or the Pentagon? Let's go back to Jesus. Let's go to John 18, 19 and see what Jesus had to say on secrecy and transparency. So Jesus is brought, uh, you guys know the story of Jesus, right? He, he came into this world. People didn't like him. He was healing people everywhere. He went to the synagogue, which is the temple, kind of like this. Spent time with believers. But then people were upset at his teachings. So they brought him to a guy named Annas, which was one of the religious leaders of their time. Right? And this is the encounter they had. John 18, 19, it says, Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. And then Jesus said, I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Oh, that gives me chills. Let's read it again. It's so beautiful. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. And check what happens in the next verse. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer to the high priest, he demanded. Jesus said, if I said something wrong, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Oof. Jesus versus the Pentagon. There's some truths about the universe, but we can't tell you everything. What if it falls in, in the wrong hands. And Jesus, on the other hand, he's like, I've spoken everything openly. Not only that, he says, I did it so open that you guys can go talk to the disciples and they can tell you what I've taught. Isn't that transparency? Isn't that beautiful? So for those of you who are followers of Jesus, whether right here or watching online, what does that look like? I think, I think in a sense, we are to be the linguists of God, right? We are to be the ones that, that can translate, in a sense, what God is saying. Because he taught the disciples everything already. He taught us everything. Everything is out in the open. There's, there's nothing, nothing else you need to like, oh, maybe there's, there's a new mystery, a new revelation. All has been revealed through Jesus Christ, all of it, every single bit of it. And he made it known to us. So what does that look like? Well, let's go back to Blatko Vedral, because I, I just thought that guy is amazing as a scientist. Um, he says, check what he says, one day we will be able to explain phenomena as complicated as love, for example. But at the moment, I don't think anybody has any ideas how to approach that. He's talking about love. This guy, a scientist who just told us that the universe is made of information. Just imagine, just he's a great thinker. He's whatever. He's amazing, right? And he's saying, one day we will be able to explain phenomena as complicated as love for example. But right now, I don't think anybody has any ideas as to how to approach that. Now, what if he's completely wrong on that one? But I like, I like that he's bringing 
things as ethereal as love as a scientist, right? Because I think for a scientist, that's, that must be hard to explain. It might be easier to explain, you know, what water is composed of than to say what love is. Because what is love? How do you explain it? What is the, what is the matter? What is the time, space, constraint of love? But if you say the universe is made of information, and if you say there's an information that you can know that can make you access what love is, then you can know what love is. And we do know, right? 1 Corinthians 13 says, and yet I will show you the most excellent way if I speak in the tongues of men or of, of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. This is Paul, one of the followers, the early apostles um, of Jesus. Does he have information about who God is in regards to love that maybe even somebody like Vladko Vedral can't understand? And Paul puts it so beautifully. He says... There's a most excellent way if I speak in tongues of men or angels. I even dare say of demons, right? Because I'm on the internet and I know some people are looking into this like, can I talk to aliens? It's, a, it's, it's pretty dark, okay? But here's the, here's the key element of speaking in anything, if I do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. You know, in our society, in our day and age, there's a lot of people who are resonating with this phrase, good vibes. Good vibes only. Um, there's, there's, there's this thing called the vibrations, uh, the law of vibrations, right? If you think of maybe even like the, the early reggae, uh, movement. A lot of it was kind of like centered around that idea of like, oh, positive, whatever's loving, whatever's um, no music. It's even it's even in that realm of vibration that speaks to people in a outer state of mind, per se. Well, I dare to say, some of those people who are pursuing those elements of like, I. If there is a God out there, if I'm pursuing that God, if I'm trying to find the positive vibration, the positive elements of the universe to speak to me, how can I know that, that being, right? And a lot of people are saying that there is something higher than love, okay? And this is super tricky because Paul right here is saying... There is nothing higher than love. Even if you speak whatever language you want, the, the angelic language, the vibration language, nothing can be higher than love. I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. It's, it's so interesting that he even pairs that to to at least two musical instruments that do exactly that. They vibrate and resound. And he's saying, even if they do, if you don't have love, it's worth nothing. If you want to speak the language Jesus speaks, it's all in the open. His wisdom, his truth, it's been revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. And before Jesus went back to the Father, he said, an advocate is going to come and he's going to show us the truth. He's going to point us to truth. Do you want to know the truth? It's right here in his word. And this is what I want to do for my last Bible verse reference. Because we're in a series called Wisdom to Live By. And I kind of did this all like reverse engineered <laughs> our talk today. But we're in a, on a series called Wisdom to Live By. 
And today's uh, message was actually on Proverbs 15. And we haven't even touched Proverbs 15. Can we go to Proverbs 15? <laughs> All right, and I'm just going to read verse 1 of Proverbs 15. I'm in the NIV version. Where am I? Here, Proverbs 15. It says, a gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. Just that verse right there. A gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. Anger. This is how I want to end. Do you, do you guys think that Jesus read this verse when he was on this planet, when he was growing up as a Jewish boy? Do you think that he ever read this verse it's almost a guarantee that he did, right? A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. I can't help but think of if what we're reading is wisdom to live by, what is wisdom? And I was thinking, well, wisdom is truth. Right? And our world is looking for truth. Our world is looking for reality, for connection. Our world is lonely. It's, it's unbelievable to think that this is dark, but people are committing suicide because they think they're alone. And we're in a world with like 8 billion people. How can you be alone? I mean... Who cares if we're alone in the universe? We're not alone in this planet and we feel alone. That's a paradox. People are looking for truth. And right here, the truth of God's wisdom is available to us. Jesus made it available to us in the open, transparent, all access, VIP even. It's like all of it is for you. All of it. There's nothing I've hidden from you. Everything I've heard from the Father I have made known to you. He even called us friends because of that precise thing. It's like everything I know from the Father I made known to you. Therefore, I will call you friends and no longer servants. Our world needs truth. Truth is the base of reality. Do you know or maybe you even are facing a time where you're maybe even confused about what reality is. What your own reality is. Is that a common reality among us? It's his truth, his wisdom that brings us together as one. Let's pray. Um, David, won't you come on up? We're gonna, today we're going to take communion. And we just want to have a moment of response. And even for the people that you know you who are watching online, we want to have a time where we wrestle with this truth. Where we wrestle with this intel, with this information that has been made available to us. Would you close your eyes? And have your own time with God. I mean, he is here. We just sang. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. Our God is surely in this place. Jesus, you didn't create a world and then just make it spin and forget about us. You are the creator who loves us, who wants to communicate with us, who sent your son, Jesus. Our linguist, the one who showed us how you speak to us. 
the one who showed us what the ultimate way to showcase love to one another is through sacrifice and forgiveness even forgiving the ignorance Lord so as much as we're trying to pursue truth and maybe we're living in our in our alternate realities at least we are pursuing truth Lord and if you are the truth we want you to speak to us we want your truth to be revealed to us we no longer want to live in our own lies we no longer want to believe that we are lonely we want to believe that you are for us that you love us that you created us as poems as pieces of art that in your perfection you have created us beautifully wonderfully made in your image with the capacity to love one another where there's scientists that don't even know what love is but they know that there is something out there that doesn't make sense because forgiveness sometimes doesn't make sense because dying on a cross for our sins sometimes doesn't make sense and we try to rationalize our experiences and you come to us and say I'm going to show you the ultimate way to God the ultimate way to love one another and you even said by this the world will know that you are my disciples if you love one another there's some truth the world doesn't know and that is the truth of your love Jesus I pray that this love that this truth can be so evident in our lives that just like we showcased our love yesterday and we went to a, a retired teacher in our neighborhood and we painted her house that that was an act of love but even beyond that Lord that we can start building relationships back even to our enemies because you only created one planet and one race and that's the human race and love is getting along with one another and we as your disciples we should be the ones that know what that love is because we have received it first because while we were still sinners while we were still dead in our trespasses you loved us and that love has transformed us and if it hasn't we pray that this morning it does that we welcome your truth your love into our lives that it can transform us that we can start loving our neighbor and loving our enemies this country doesn't need any more division what it needs is people who follow you people who pursue your love and who can welcome those who disagree with us who can welcome those who think different than us who can welcome those who are lost in their own realities because they don't know the truth the truth will set us free Lord, we are here for you. We welcome you. And we thank you even for the gift of communion. A beautiful picture that we can partake on your work on the cross for us. That we can remember you by taking the elements. Lord, so today we remember that you died on that cross for our sins for our transgressions that you gave us the ultimate knowledge of truth and that truth has set us free
Thank you, Lord. All right, so Rick and Brooke, you guys are coming up with the elements. They're going to serve us. Or actually, no, you walk to them, right? Okay, get up, stand up, walk to Rick and Brooke. They're going to serve you the elements, and then we're going to take them together.